Hello everybody and thank you for watching Long Shot Wargame. Today our game sees the battle-hardened American 3rd Armored Division attempt to breach Germany's last line of defense, the Siegfried Line. In the late summer of 1944, the combined Allied armies were pouring across France. The American Operation Cobra was successful in advancing American units into St. Lo and beyond. The Canadian and British operations Atlantic and Goodwood respectively saw the key French city of Caen liberated by late July. In August, the combined Allied armies encircled and destroyed the German Army Group B in the vicinity of Falaise. Now free of Normandy hedgerow country, the Allies advanced quickly east. In late August, the French capital was liberated. At this point, little stood between the advancing allies and the German border. In France, the Germans mounted a tenacious defense. However, even with the advantage of the unique Norman terrain, the Germans could not stop the overwhelming onslaught. Soon, however, they would be fighting for the motherland. By September, the Germans had mostly repatriated, falling into positions on the German West Wall. The West Wall, also known as the Siegfried Line, was a heavily fortified defensive line positioned on the German border to defend against attack from the West. The Siegfried Line was built in the 1930s and was designed as a counterpoint to the French Maginot Line. The line stretched for miles and consisted of bunkers, obstacles, and minefields. The most iconic feature of the Siegfried Line was a tank obstacle that would come to be known as Dragon's Teeth. Bands of these obstacles lay across the German countryside reminiscent of the Great Walls of Antiquity. Although on the cusp of obsolescence by contemporary warfare standards, the Dragon's Teeth and the Siegfried Line would prove to be a formidable challenge for the Allied units that stand charged with its destruction. One such unit was the American 3rd Armored Division. By September 1944, the 3rd Armored Division was known as the Spearhead Division because of its impressive role in the Normandy Campaign. 3rd Armored was one of 16 armored divisions in the Second World War. Created as an instrument of mobile warfare, the American armored divisions would prove to be a highly effective formation. In terms of composition, the 3rd Armored Division was characteristic of most armored divisions of the time. The major combat elements consisted of a headquarters and service company. This made up the divisional command two armor regiments, which made up the backbone of the division's fighting power, an armored infantry regiment, which is representative of the combined arms nature of the division, an armored engineer battalion responsible for mobility, counter-mobility, and survivability related tasks, an armored reconnaissance battalion, a signals company, the division artillery consisting of three independent artillery battalions, and the division trains, responsible for supply, logistics, and sustainability of the division. In September 1944, the 3rd Armored Division was commanded by Major General Maurice Rose. Like many armored divisions, the Spearhead Division operated under the Combat Command Organization. This saw the division's subordinate units mixed up into three roughly equal commands. This allowed for increased tactical flexibility and the ability to leverage the division's full combined arms capability for a variety of situations. In September 1944, the 3rd Armored Division was organized into the Combat Command A, led by Brigadier General Doyle O. Hickey, Combat Command B, led by Brigadier General Truman E. Budno, and Combat Command R, which was the divisional reserve. Today, our game will be representative of the actions of Combat Command A. 
On September 12th, the 3rd Armored Division was positioned to be the first American unit to assault the venerable Siegfried Line. Routing to the south of the German border city Aachen, the two combat commands of the 3rd would scout and assault the line. Combat Command A would assault the section in the vicinity of Oberforstbach, and Combat Command B would assault and advance into the town of Röttgen. Opposing the Spearhead Division was elements of the German 9th Panzer Division and 12th Infantry Division. The opening turn of the game sees Rick, the American commander, move his forces cautiously forward toward their objective. The wheels and tracks of the 3rd Armored Division have been turning for almost four months. The next test of the battle-hardened division lay just ahead. Division has ordered a probe of a key road crossing of the Siegfried Line. The German forces stand ready for what lays ahead, the defense of the Fatherland. The American deployment zone is the left 24 inches of the table. From here, the American task force must punch through the defensive line, clear and destroy the German bunker, and eliminate the German threat, allowing follow-on forces to exploit the breach. The German deployment zone will be the right side of the table behind the Dragon's Teeth obstacles. German units will start the game in position, but not physically on the table. Tom, the German commander, will track his units on a gridded map until they are spotted or fire. The German defense centers around the impregnable anti-tank bunker with a 90-degree field of fire. The bunker is defended from close assault by two interlocking machine gun ports. Additionally, Tom has placed a minefield on the near side of the roadblock. The German mission is to stop the Americans from breaching the line and produce as many casualties as possible. The American units begin to move up to the tree line in front of the bunker. This is the last area of concealment before they commit to an attack. Rick's forward reconnaissance units observe and report on the bunker. They assess that the bunker is armed with an 88mm gun. Armed with this information, Rick decides to abandon the roadblock as the focal point of the assault. Instead, he splits his forces into two and will attempt to flank the bunker and breach the dragon's teeth elsewhere. With the plan finalized, Rick begins to move armor forces into position. The veteran tank crews maneuver their machines with seasoned precision. The armored infantrymen grip their weapons and march forward. The Americans have not yet observed any enemy units. With first priority for fire, Rick calls a preparatory fire mission to hopefully shake up any dug-in defenders. Miles away, the armored artillery battery receives the request. Copy, 0520-1000. The rounds land with moderate deviation and cause three casualties to a concealed German infantry squad. On the American right, half-tracks and the Sherman Dozer are sent forward to prepare for a breach. A second fire mission is called on the right. Rick hopes this will soften the defenders and mask what flank will be his main effort. The second fire mission lands with similar effect. The Sherman Dozer moves forward alone and begins clearing a lane in the Dragon's Teeth. Battlefield commanders and our game participants have three options for clearing Dragon's Teeth. Based on timing and logistics, it was preferred to locate and exploit an existing road crossing. However, like in our game, this was often heavily defended. The second option was combat engineers. Engineers could use TNT to blow up the dragon's teeth. And finally, a Sherman Dozer could be used to simply bury the teeth, creating a land bridge suitable for armored traffic. The Dozer begins its work. Unseen by the vehicle commander, a German Stug hides out in ambush. A shot rings out. The round slams across the front armor of the Sherman and is thrown into the sky. The Stug crew labors to load a second round. With seconds to spare, a second shot rings out. 
This one from the rear. A crack Stewart crew throws a smoke round directly in front of the Stug, buying the Sherman life-saving time. Now with the threat temporarily blinded, Rick moves an armored infantry platoon forward to push through the dragon's teeth and clear the far tree line. As the first squad dismounts, a second concealed menace shows its teeth. The unmistakable thump of an auto cannon sound. The infantry squad takes cover the best they can in the dragon's teeth, but the powerful weapon demands a price. The infantrymen take several casualties and are left pinned. The rest of the platoon dismounts and pushes into the dragon's teeth. Both the infantrymen and engineers fall into the murderous spray of a concealed MG-42. Several more casualties are taken. The advance is stalled at the barbed wire. For a moment, Rick focuses back on his left. The Americans have massed sufficient forces to conduct an attack. Several armor units are brought forward. An M8 Scott moves forward to provide smoke and HE fire to assumed enemy positions. The smoke shells land, but unfavorable wind conditions cause them to be only marginally effective. The infantry is set forward regardless. Under the cover of their organic weapons, a daring infantry squad dismounts and runs through the dragon's teeth. A second half-track speeds up and dismounts an engineer squad. They will attempt to rig the dragon's teeth with TNT. Back on the American right, things escalate quickly. With the advancing enemy fixed, Tom calls a fire mission. The German artillery battery responds with an effective mission that causes casualties and pins several vehicles. In hopes of reducing the machine gun fire and blinding the German forward observer, Rick uses 81 millimeter mortars to blanket the area with smoke. Now with the relief of concealment, the American infantrymen rush forward in a daring close assault of the tree line. An unbelievable crescendo of violence erupts as both sides fight desperately. Simultaneously, the Sherman Dozer works to clear the obstacles. At this point, it is half complete. Now having maneuvered clear of the smoke, the German Stug crew is eager for a target. A shot is fired, destroying a half-track. Immediately, with robotic precision, a second shot is fired. The round connects with the Sherman Dozer, stopping it short of completing its mission. Driven by revenge, a Sherman tank rushes forward. Its high-velocity 76mm gun sounds. An armored-piercing round screams across the wreckage. The Stug is silent. At this stage of the game, Rick and Tom have both taken casualties. Rick is well positioned to attempt a breach at both points. Without a dozer, he will rely on his combat engineer squads. Tom's forward units are locked in vicious combat with the Americans. However, some of Tom's force is still a mystery to Rick, including an assumed armor reserve. On Rick's left, the infantry have pushed all the way to the tree line next to the bunker and are prepared for a close assault of its defenders. Just behind them, a combat engineer squad prepares a demolition charge. Armored forces move forward and are ready to exploit the gap. With skilled expertise, the engineers calmly affix the charges to the concrete barriers. The squad leader issues the command. Fire the hole! The first successful gap is created. On the German side, two units are revealed as they come into view. A Stug and a Pac-40 anti-tank gun loom over the breach point. Rick immediately calls for a mortar mission to hopefully pin the menacing vehicle. The shaken Stug crew are overwhelmed by the incoming rounds and are left pinned. The Pac crew was not affected by the shelling and stand ready to perform their duties. They load their weapon. Next day. Fire! The shot is at the limit of the weapon's effective range. The round impacts but is deflected upward. 
The forward American infantrymen are now locked in close combat with the dug-in German defenders. A half-track is the first vehicle through the gap and races forward to support. It's heavy machine gun sounds. The vehicle pulls forward into close proximity of the stunned German assault gun. As it slows, an odd shriek is heard from the opposite tree line. A concealed German squad fielding a dreadfully simple yet effective weapon ambushes the track with a Panzerfaust. The vehicle erupts into flames. Back on the American right, the reserve infantry squad and armor are sent forward. Once again, smoke is used to mask the assault. The engineers prepare the charges for breach number two. Fire the hole! The way is clear. Now the full power of Rick's forces loom over Tom's defenders. At both breach points, armor and infantry are pushed through. A Stuart tank is sent forward with the hopes of drawing out concealed German units. As it races down the dirt road, a foe comes into view. The martyr lurches as it accelerates. The German crew tries to close the distance in hopes of guaranteeing a kill shot. The small vehicle jerks with recoil. The close range shot of the 75 mm gun was no match for the lightly armored Stuart. Just to the side of the bunker, the infantry combat continues. With the infantry tied up and the only visible German armor pinned, a daring Sherman crew moves forward at the bunker. Tom now commits his armor reserve. Fearing it is too late, Tom assesses both breach points and decides to send his remaining armor toward the bunker. As the armored pair break from the road, a tank silhouette can barely be made out through the smoke and distance. The Panzer fires. The round disappears without impact. With the advantage of range, the mighty Panther fires. Its rounds also fail to connect. The Panzer moves forward to close the distance. This would prove to be a fatal mistake. With their focus forward, the Panzer crew failed to see the powerful threat to their left. From a great distance away, an M10 tank destroyer fulfills its designed purpose. Two Shermans now prosecute the Panther. The 76 remains locked barrel to barrel with the feared German vehicle. The crew of the Sherman 75 slam the vehicle into gear. Its radial motor screams as it races to flank the mighty vehicle. The commander orders the turret to the left. Once at close range, a shot is fired over the head of a German infantry squad. The round slams into the side of the vehicle. It is lost. At the bunker, the way is now clear for American combat engineers. The sapper squad moves to flank the fortification. All available TNT is collected and placed against the concrete. The occupants of the bunker are unaware of the forthcoming doom. The charge is set. The remaining German units leave the area. Today, the men of the 3rd Armored Division accomplished their mission. Two successful breaches were made, and the German bunker was destroyed without firing a shot. Historically, such bunkers would be covered with earth using bulldozers. This would ensure they could not be reoccupied later and used. Thanks in part to the hard fighting of the Spearhead Division, the revered Siegfried Line would fall and the Allied armies would move into Germany. Some of the factors that led to Rick's success were his belligerent and effective use of smoke, effective indirect fire, and overall textbook use of a combined armed force. Some factors that led to Tom's failure include failing to commit armor reserves in time and not applying sufficient combat force at the Dragon's Teeth to prevent the breach. For this game, we use the Battle Group rule set. Some elements of the game were inspired by the West Wall Campaign Supplement. Thank you as always for watching Longshot Wargame. 
please be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.